Okay, BAMP can be expensive, but it doesn't have to be. I'm Cheryl and my husband Matt's behind the camera and we're in the Rockies and the whole purpose of our channel is to help you have an amazing trip. And today we are in BAMP. We've been spending the last few days here and we wanted to show you some of the tips we've learned to save some money while traveling to BAMP. The first tip is to book early. BAMP has over 4 million visitors a year. And just from my observation, most of the visitors here are not Canadians coming in for just a day trip. These are international visitors, people that live far away, and so they need lots of lodging. We started booking our accommodations in March for August, and I can tell you things were pretty much booked up even then. There was a lot of competition to get good spots. But if you get on it early, the more affordable places will be more likely to be available. Another little tip if you are a little late in the game or just you know, you don't have to stay right in Banff when you visit Banff. The beautiful city of Canmore is just 20 minutes away, and that's where we're staying. We saved a lot of money choosing to stay in Canmore, and we're still getting amazing mountain views there and a short drive into Banff. So that was that's your first tip for sending or for saving some money. Next up is to pay attention to happy hour specials. This is a pretty big one actually for saving money on food. During the hours from usually from like 3 to 6 p.m., these restaurants and bars will have a lot of deals for you. Food's going to be a lot cheaper. And the added benefit to that is that you're going to be eating off of the peak dining time. So you'll be able to eat a little quicker or you won't have as much of a wait. And you're going to save money. So this is a little thing when you travel as a tourist. Try to live like off of your regular 9 to 5 work schedule and your eating schedule because it'll kind of save you the crowds and can save you a few dollars here. So tons of restaurants and bars around here have a happy hour. And guess what? We are putting this video together with the help of our friends, the Mountain Town Ramblers. They cover Banff and Jasper and as well as other places in Canada. And they have a blog post all about happy hour specials. They have done all the work for you to collect which restaurants are gonna have happy hours on which days of the week. We will put a link to that in the description. Make sure to check that out. The Mountain Town Ramblers, Kyle and Teresa are awesome. We'll be talking about them more later as well. Okay, the next way that you could possibly save some money is to understand the shuttles in Banff. In fact, it's actually possible. There's a shuttle behind me right now. It's possible to visit Banff without a car. You could actually fly into Calgary and catch a shuttle to Banff National Park, to the town of Banff, stay here, and use shuttles to get everywhere you need. They, it is really remarkable, the system that they have here. Since this is actually a town and not just a national park, they have a mass transit system and it gets you to all the major spots that you would want to visit when you visit Banff. Certain hotels will give you a free shuttle pass or a free bus pass during your visit. So that's a way that you can save some money. If you get a hotel that has the free bus passes, that's pretty nice. The bus passes typically are like $2 per trip. So if you're taking them up to the mountain, $2. Come back down the mountain, $2. You can get like a three-day pass for 30 something dollars. But the nice thing is if you get, a, get the right hotel, you might get free shuttle tickets. Next up is to pack a picnic. We have a family of six people. We've got four kids. And generally when we travel, we don't want to blow all of our money on food because traveling with six people is expensive anyway. So what we try to do is we try to get a room with a free breakfast or do our own, and then we always pack a picnic for lunch or dinner. Picnics are amazing because they give you the convenience of eating whenever you want. It costs less money. And then we're in bound for heaven's sakes. The views can't be beat. There is no restaurant that's gonna have a more beautiful view than sitting outside in nature. And so a picnic is a great way to save money and still have a good time. And then we do try to eat at least one meal out a day just for the experience and getting some local flair. And sometimes it might not even be a meal. It might be like a beaver tail. So it's just something fun like that. But yeah, you can save a lot of money packing your own food. We ate a picnic lunch at this Cascades of Time yesterday in a pavilion. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. And all it cost was the supplies to make sandwiches. Okay, up next, I wanna talk about experiences. So when Cheryl and I used to travel before we started doing this for YouTube, we were pretty frugal travelers. And we, as Cheryl mentioned, we have four kids. And so we weren't doing all these experiences and excursions. Every once in a while we would do some because we do like to add variety to the trip. And sometimes spending money really does help you have a better trip. As we've been doing this as a YouTubing couple, 
we want to do more experiences because what we're trying to do is find out which ones are worthwhile so that we can help you. We, we make travel guides that you can get on our website and we give you all of our, our best secrets and our best tips in those travel guides. We want to give you honest information that will help you have a great trip. So we are doing more and more of these experiences. And one thing I've learned is a lot of times, you know, people feel pressured to do these like must do experiences like taking the Banff gondola to the top of the mountain or doing a boat ride or doing a river float, things like that. And honestly, you don't have to do those to have a great trip to Banff or any other national park for that matter. The Bow River, for example, is a beautiful river that flows through town. We spent quite a while walking up and down the river. We also did a Bow River float, a uh, river float. The river float was fantastic, but I mean, it was pretty spendy at like $70 per person. And our river walk was just as nice almost. I mean, it was really great. Another example, uh, we did a boat cruise on the lake and yet it's just as enjoyable to sit in one of those Canadian red chairs, those, Can those Parks Canada red chairs on the edge of the lake and just enjoy a half hour of peace and quiet at the lake. So don't feel like you have to do all the expensive things. If you want to save some money, you can have some really nice experiences without spending all the money. The next is travel when currency is in your favor. I've noticed so many international visitors here in Banff. Of course, if you are coming from another country, you are going to be exchanging money. And so travel when your money is like keen because it can really save you a lot. In our case, we're from the United States and right now things are about 30% off for us because the dollar is a little stronger. Last year when we traveled to Europe, it was the opposite. Everything was more expensive. So if you have any control over when you travel, travel when your money is keen. Let's talk about food again for just a second because food is such a big part of traveling. If you are really tight on funds, but you still want to give your family some experiences with the food, one thing that my parents did growing up was we didn't ever really eat full meals at restaurants, but sometimes they would treat us to an ice cream cone or just something little and special unique to the area. And I would look forward to that. It was a really special experience for me to try something unique to the area. And just if your family's not used to eating out, it'll still be a special treat for the people that you're traveling with. Okay, now earlier I talked about not feeling like you have to buy all those experiences and attractions, but again, I do think some of those experiences and attractions are worthwhile. Here in Banff, they have actually bundled a lot of these together. So rather than buying individual attractions, if you buy a bundle, you will save money, as long as, of course, you were gonna do all those attractions anyway. So they, they have a variety of different packages on the website. It's run by Pursuit. And uh, if, you just, if you just go on there and look at the different packages, I've noticed that those packages have been changing around quite a bit lately. And I think it's because they opened up some new ones in Golden. But, you know, if you're gonna do like the gondola or a boat cruise or go up onto the glacier within that big bus, uh, look at bundling those on their website. This next tip is for those of you traveling with children and teens. I say create a budget and include them in it. I used to teach financial literacy and it was one of my very favorite classes. And I'm telling you, this is a great opportunity to teach the children about how much a vacation costs and to get some insight into what is the most important thing to them. A couple months ago, we were buying school clothes and I made a budget for my kids and told them like they gave me their needs and I gave them a budget. I noticed my kids being a lot more intentional on their spending when they knew if they saved a little bit of money on this, that they would have more money to buy that special pair of shoes they wanted. And I think kids are the same with travel. Plus, I think you'd be able to tease out the things that are really the most important to the kids you're traveling with. We were still blown away. We've been on some pretty amazing vacations with our family. And sometimes when we get home, we'll be like, what was your favorite thing? And they'll say, oh, they serve sausage at the hotel. And we paid hundreds of dollars to take them to Disneyland. And so I guess the point being is that Set a budget for yourself, include the kids, and really think about what the people you're traveling with are going to enjoy the most. Okay, let's talk about another excursion thing because not all their excursions are included in those bundles. And I just wanted to give you one personal tip that really I discovered as I booked this trip. We did a wagon ride and a barbecue cookout through Banff Trail Rides. And as I was online looking for this, 
I saw, when I Google searched it, I saw multiple options come up for a wagon and cookout ride in Banff, and I thought it was kind of strange, and I actually called him and said, is there more than one of you that are doing this wagon ride and barbecue cookout? And the lady said, no, no, we're the only one in Banff that does this. So if you're seeing it on other sites, these are resellers. And so I looked at those other sites and they were selling the tickets for cheaper than what the Banff Trail Rides was selling them for. So I did book it through getyourguide.com, but I did save a little bit of money doing that. So, you, so it's probably worth at least just shopping around a little bit on some of these activities to see if there's a reseller out there. Okay, my last tip for saving money is to have really good information. Think about it. If you get a financial planner, you end up paying that financial planner for their knowledge and information to help you navigate investments. Traveling is the same way, and we have a travel guide that will help you maximize your time and your money. Because as a traveler, that is what you're spending. You're spending time and money, and those are precious to you. Our travel guide on our website at We're in the Rockies was written in conjunction with the Mountain Town Ramblers, Kyle and Teresa, that we referenced earlier. These really knowledgeable couple on Banff and Jasper National Parks who we worked with to make the guide. We are following their very guide here as we visit this trip, and it is saving us so much time and money as we follow their suggestions. So go to our website, we'reintherockies.com to get that guide. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, go west, young traveler.